general suggestion here is a more traditional style of diet. You've probably heard of the Mediterranean diet, uh, but every culture really has their equivalent traditional diets. And when it comes to diet styles, the density of nutrients like vitamins and minerals is generally more important than the proportion of macronutrients. So like the amounts of fats and carbs because the types of fats and the types of carbs can vary so drastically. There's a huge difference between whole grain and highly refined white flour. So the picture I have here on the slide is from the 2019 Canadian Food Guidelines. And it gives us sort of this idea of this plate that is half fruits and vegetables, whole grain foods for a quarter, and then different types of protein foods for the other quarter. And they suggest mostly plant-based foods, which also include a lot of fiber. So really groundbreaking studies have shown that these type of eating styles, regardless of the actual amount of calories people are taking in, can be as effective as anti-anxiety and anti-depressant medication. But most importantly, they don't have the bad side effects. And there are a bunch of good side effects, like reduced uh, gut issues and improved sleep and energy levels and the reduced burden of all types of chronic illnesses. Additionally, what these diets don't have is a lot of additives, like preservatives or uh, food emulsifiers that can harm our community because they are put into food to prevent and kill microbes so they do something a little bit similar in our own gut. That's some general guidelines for feeding your microbes, but we live in an era of misinformation and unclear science, especially around nutrition. And honestly, some of this blame falls on the researchers who can't really seem to get things together to standardize how we do things. And so we've heard all sorts of different information about diet styles. Eggs are good one day, eggs are bad the next day, and all sorts of stuff. And let me say, if you're looking for a study to support your opinion on nutrition, it's probably out there. Nutrition research can be notoriously complicated. There's sketchy funding sources, um, animal research that doesn't translate to humans, and the actual methods that are used in the study are often what determines what the outcome is. And that doesn't mean that we don't know anything. How we know that diet effects our stress levels and mental health come from many different converging results. So many different people have shown same sort of results in different ways. We've seen interventions with animals and humans, and we've also seen the long-term effects on a larger scale. So looking at population health. Additionally, we don't eat nutrients one by one. We eat a whole bunch of food all at once. And this makes a really, really big difference. For example, if you were to eat a teaspoon of plain sugar, your blood sugars would rise quickly and fall quickly. But if you ate the same amount of sugar, but in an apple, the fiber in the apple would actually prevent your blood sugar from spiking and would keep it stable for longer and then a slower decline, so preventing that sugar crash. Additionally, who is in our guts also makes a huge difference because we all have a unique microbial fingerprint. For the most part, different microbes, but they cover the same roles. But some microbes prefer different nutrients. Some like carbs, some like fats more. And of course, there's also the human metabolic effect. And then all the things that affect it, sleep and medications. And so the same dietary intervention can work differently in different people. For example, on the last slide, I recommended inulin fiber, the prebiotic. But for some people who have intestinal conditions like irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease, they can actually react poorly to prebiotic foods because the microbial action is too much for their already inflamed gut. 
these people might actually benefit from a low prebiotic diet until they can get their symptoms under control from other ways. So what is healthy for one person may not be healthy for another. Some people might benefit from certain diets like the ketogenic diet you might've heard about, but that's a really uh, medicinal type of diet style that can help people who've tried a lot of other things. Whereas for other people, it might cause them more mental stress than health from the diet. Best advice that I can give is to be your own test subject. You can try things out, drop what doesn't serve you, because we're all going to have different approaches to eating. 